Hi, welcome to R&S Academy. My name is Ram Prasad. Let me give a small brief about me. I did my master's in r and and then I worked for 25 years with various organizations involving in product development and technology innovation functions. I had five patents filed on my name. Out of my passion, I transitioned into teaching. Presently, I am into coaching GATE and IES aspirants on r and subject. I also conduct workshop on r and systems, faculty development programs, etc. for the engineering colleges. Recently, I conducted webinars for the members of ISHRE and ASHRE. Based on the response I received for the lectures on refrigeration systems, I am presenting here with a series of lectures on psychrometry, again for the benefit of the students and the professionals. I believe these lectures will also add a great value to all of you. This is the seventh lecture in the series of lectures on psychrometry. In this lecture, we will discuss the summer air conditioning system with ventilation air. In this case, we will discuss the system with zero bypass factor. Let us consider the same setup as in the previous lecture. We have a room that is required to be maintained at state I against RSH and RLH. The recirculation air comes out of the room at state I. Let us plot the state point I on the psychrometric chart. Starting from I, if we draw the RSHF line, it will intersect the saturation curve at room ADP. Up till this point, there is no change with reference to the previous case. In this case, we are supplying fresh ambient air for ventilation purposes. Let the state of the ambient air be at O and let us plot it on the psychrometric chart. Does this mean that there won't be any recirculation of room air in this case? The answer is no. Excepting few cases like operation theatres, ICUs, etc. in the hospital air conditioning applications and some special purpose requirements in the industrial air conditioning, remaining air conditioning systems will recirculate the room air along with the ventilation air. However, the percentage of ventilation air and recirculation air might change with different applications. Therefore, we have in this case the mixture of ventilation air and recirculation air at state point 1 entering into the coil. Let us now plot this process of mixing of air streams on the psychrometric chart. T1, W1 and H1 are the properties corresponding to state point 1. If we are taking let us say x meter cube of ventilation air into the system, then we must throw x meter cube of recirculation air out into the atmosphere. The remaining recirculation air at state I will be used in the system. Please note here that the coil is handling the ventilation load in addition to the room loads. Therefore, the load on the coil is greater than the load on the room. Then, as the load on the coil and the load on the room are different, are the coil ADP and room ADP different in this case? The answer is no. We have the bypass factor is equal to zero, hence the coil ADP and the room ADP are equal in this case. The line joining 1 and C is called the GSHF line. What is GSHF by the way? It is the grand sensible heat factor and it is equal to TSH divided by GTH. It can also be expressed like this. While the RSHF line intersects the saturation curve at room ADP, the GSHF line always intersects the saturation curve at coil ADP. As the coil ADP is equal to room ADP in this case, both the RSHF line and the GSHF line intersect the saturation curve at the same point. Therefore, 
the air exiting the coil and also supplied into the room will be at state C. Let us now look at the nomenclature specific to this case. The process line CI is called the condition line for the room and during this process the moisture enters the room at state C, gets heated and humidified by picking up RSH and RLH from the room and then exits the room at state I. Similarly, the process line 1C is called the condition line for the coil. And during this process, the mixture of fresh air and recirculation air enters the cooling coil at state 1, gets cooled and dehumidified in the coil and then exits the cooling coil at state C. Now, let us discuss about the various volume flow rates that prevail in the system. Let CMM1 be the volume flow rate of moisture at state point 1 which is entering into the cooling coil. The volume flow rate of air exiting the coil and also supplied into the room will also be at CMM1. After picking up RSH and RLH from the room, we therefore have CMM1 at state I leaving the room for recirculation purposes. If we are inducting CMMO of fresh air at state O for ventilation purposes, then we need to throw the recirculation air of a volume equal to CMMO out into the atmosphere. We are then left with only CMMI of recirculation air at state I remaining in the system. In other words, we have CMMI plus CMMO is equal to CMM1. Please note that the ventilation air requirement CMMO can be taken from the data tables specific to our application. Let me now summarize the volume flow rates involved in this system. The first one is CMM1. It is the volume flow rate at the following locations in the system. It is the volume flow rate of the mixture of fresh and recirculation air that is entering the coil at T1. It is the volume flow rate of moisture at a coil exit or supplied into the room at coil ADP. And finally, it is also the volume flow rate of moisture that is coming out of the room at temperature TI. The next one is CMMO. It is the volume flow rate of the fresh air taken in for ventilation purposes as temperature TO. The last one is CMMI. It is the volume flow rate of air recirculating in the system at temperature TI. Among these three, which CMM do you think will be the specification for selecting the fan? The answer is very obvious, CMM1. This understanding helps us to gain good clarity on calculations. Let me now take you to the calculation part. We can compute RSHF using RSH and RTH. Then we can find the coil ADP on trial and error basis using this expression. We know TI and WI corresponding to state I. Assume a T value and collect the corresponding W value from the psychrometric chart. Iterate by substituting the T and W values in, the ex in this expression against T ADP and W ADP respectively until the LHS value becomes equal to the RHS value. The corresponding T is the room ADP for the system. In this case, the load on the coil is greater than the load on the room. However, as the bypass factor is equal to zero, the room ADP will be equal to the coil ADP. We can now compute the CMM1 using RSH and coil ADP. CMM1 is the specification for the fan selection. We can then compute CMMI using CMM1 and CMMO. Let us now locate the state point for the mixture of fresh and recirculation air on the psychrometric chart. 
First, let us plot the state of the recirculation air I and the state of the fresh air O on the chart. The state of the mixture will be on the line joining O and I. For the exact location of the mixture, we need to find the properties of the mixture. From our discussion on adiabatic mixing of air streams, we have these expressions for enthalpy and also for specific humidity. We know the values for all these terms. Therefore, using these computed values of H1 and W1, we can get the state point 1 on the psychrometric chart. The temperature corresponding to the state point 1 is the temperature of the moisture entering the cooling coil. We got the room loads namely RSH and RLH from the heat load calculations. Let us now compute the additional heat loads on the air conditioning system due to ventilation air. Outside air sensible heat OASH it is the sensible heat required to be removed to condition the ventilation air. This is the expression used for computing the OASH. Next is outside air latent heat OALH. It is the latent heat required to be removed to condition the ventilation air. This is the expression used for computing OALH. The sum of OASH and OALH is equal to OATH which is outside air total heat. OATH is the total heat load on the air conditioning system due to ventilation air alone. We then have total sensible heat TSH is equal to RSH plus OASH and total latent heat TLH is equal to RLH plus OALH. And finally, the grand total heat GTH is equal to TSH plus TLH. Hence, a refrigeration system that can deliver a minimum cooling capacity of GTH while operating at coil ADP is needed in this case. With this, this lecture is completed. In case you have any questions, doubts, etc., please feel free to write to me. The next topic is the summer air conditioning system with ventilation air and with bypass factor is equal to X. See you then. Thank you very much.